<laughs> Hello, guys, and welcome. I don't know how bad Ben is at his bills. Uh, you know what? My bills are always ahead of the meta. Ben, I'm pretty sure. One hundred percent. Ben, listen. I'm pretty sure if you had really nice, well thought out builds, and not your like gimmicky builds, you'd be a top foreigner in the scene. My builds are not gimmicky. My builds are awesome. They are very gimmicky. My builds are so good, man. Okay, let's talk about your ZVP right now. Go ahead. Best Gosu user's build. And who adopted it? Me. Okay, what <laughs> is it? It's Tell four hatch it. before pool. Oh, sounds pretty good. It's Wh awesome. What's your ZVZ right now? Uh, the Gosu user build also. <laughs> Zergling, Bane, yeah. Ling, all in off of three base. <laughs> okay, what's your ZVT build? Ling, Bane. 13 hatch on? Or third hatch on? Uh, what, 18 supply. On 18 supply. Everything sounds pretty good, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's that bad. You're so mean to me, Andre. I'm sorry. You're such a jerk. I'm sorry. Hey, guys, and welcome to the show. This is a special edition of The Pulse. We're going to be talking strategy today. And, uh, well, alongside me is the venerable Andre Gritor Pingshua. Hello, Mr. Venerable. Hello, Venomable. <laughs> Because you're poison, Ben. You're poison. <laughs> and we have a very special guest on Skype. He's looking very happy today. It is Kane. Hello, Kane. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. How about yourself? Fantastic. Uh, some of you out there in Internet land might be wondering, well, who the heck is Kane? And that's a worthwhile question to ask yourselves. If you've been tearing up the Heart of the Swarm ladder, though, you might recognize his name. He's been sitting around rank one Grandmaster for the past couple of weeks. Uh, I think right now he's ranked two behind Stefano. Damn those DDoSers, right, Kane? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. He got like 200 points ahead of me in the past day, so I'm a little bit bitter about that. Well, that's, I'm, I'm bitter all the time, so <laughs> we, can, uh, we have that in common. Uh, Kane, a lot of people are wondering sort of where you came from. Were you playing a lot of Wings of Liberty, and what was your skill level in Wings, and why are you apparently turning heads in, in Heart of the Swarm versus back then? Uh, well, I, I played a lot of Wings, but I didn't get really good until, I would say, near the end of Wings. Uh, and by that point, a lot of players had already switched over to HOTS. So I think that uh, I didn't get a lot of attention or anything like that. But now that everybody's returning to HOTS, it's it's really nice because you're getting matched up with a lot more players. And uh, yeah, I guess you could say that I'm getting a little bit more attention, which is which is nice. Well, I think uh, I think it's great, man. You've uh, you you've certainly done a good job of establishing yourself on the ladder as a good player. I was uh, checking out your profile earlier today. You've got a 74% 74 win rates in every matchup. You're like 250 and 80 on that's the ladder. A, that's insane, by the way. That's Three to one. That's <laughs> sick. Like, and let's let's get this straight, guys. I mean, when you're on that top echelon of, of Grandmasters, you're having like two to five minute wait queues. And on top of that, you're only playing against pro gamers. So he's basically three and one against every pro gamer that exists, including <laughs> all the Koreans. That's right. That's right. <laughs> uh, basically, if you were to go to Korea today, Kane, you would probably be a Code S finalist, right? Oh, obviously, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just statistics, man. It's, it's just yeah. well, math. Uh, Andre's math is <laughs> never <laughs> wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you've been playing some great StarCraft, and uh, that's actually the reason that I decided to ask you to come on the show today and talk to us about how we can raise our game. And uh, today we're going to be taking on the whole notion of Sky Toss, right? Um, some people uh, across all levels have been saying that that sort of Protoss ball becomes impossible to deal with at a certain point. And uh, I was talking to you, Kane, and you said, well, you know, I've got a pretty good handle on ZVP. It's one of my better matchups right now. What is your Zerg versus Protoss philosophy? Uh, well, right now, Muta switches are really, really powerful. A lot of Koreans are doing it, and uh, I think a lot of foreigners are starting to pick it up. So Muta's kind of let you uh, take complete map control and just get a huge economy behind it. And then you can kind of do whatever they want, whatever you want while they're still on, like, three bases. But once you let them get a fourth base uncontested, uh, it gets really, really hard for for Zerg because they can get that big death death ball army with mm -hmm. Void Rays, Tempests, uh, High Templar especially. So the biggest thing is, I would say, just denying their fourth. And you can do that in a couple of ways. You can do that with Creep Spread or... Uh, if your creature is not that great, you can just do it with your army and keeping them back and keeping them on the defensive. 
Kane, I want to talk a little about just the overall theory from the protest uh, point of view because um, I actually recently talked with a couple of protest pro gamers about this, and uh, we were talking about what's our goal normally as Protoss when you're in this matchup because as you said Zergling Hydra into Muta is one of the most deadly things and you mix that in conjunction with something like a Corruptor Roach timing and you have to be careful if you over make and play the metagame too much with the Phoenixes you're going to die to those Corruptors because everything's in your Phoenixes you have no Stalkers on the ground and your Colossus are very vulnerable so your the mm. Hydras are going to clean you up so Protosses are like okay what do we do and overall, the consensus consensus has Say been it with me. <laughs> consensus. <laughs> Very good. Sorry, <laughs> has been you just sit, 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 and then your big push out is only to take your fourth base, and then you sit, 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 wait until your mind, main, your natural, and your third base is mined out, <laughs> <laughs> and then you start attacking because you know the Zerg. Every single base after that is not going to have their main natural or third base either, so it's a lot easier to push. What do you say about this particular protest strategy? Is this the, the most solid way to go as a Zerg player? Is this what you fear most? Uh, unfortunately, it is. And part of that sucks because it's a lot like Infestor Broodlord was in, in near the end of Wings. Uh, Toss just gets to Turtle, and Zerg has to uh, kind of break them. But the, the nice thing for Zerg is that we have a lot of options, and the game all, doesn't always just diverge or converge into... Sky toss, so we have a lot of options that we can do to either stop them from getting to that point or stop them from getting to a fourth base or what have you. Cool. Well, I'm really excited to see what you have in store for I us, Kane. <laughs> Andre is going to be <laughs> our <laughs> practice partner for the day. Andre, Grandmaster level Zerg player in Heart of the Swarm, also plays Protoss at a very, uh, we'll say, adequate level. I was playing against the same people with my Protoss. Whatever noob. <laughs> <laughs> What was that face? That was my crying face. <laughs> <laughs> so Andre's going to run into the back and okay. get set up. Kane, uh, pleasure, by the way, and I uh, yeah, can't wait to nice play against you. you. Okay, sounds good. Cool. Should be really fun. Uh, so while he goes and gets set up, Kane, I'm going to start asking you a little bit about just what we have in store for ourselves. Uh, what kind of opening are we looking for? What kind of mid-game are we looking for? And ultimately, how are you going to win? Okay, so... Uh, I like to play really standard three hatch style, three hatch gasless. Uh, it's the most solid opener in the matchup by far right now, just because you can establish a really strong economy and you can also defend any all ins. Uh, what I've been trying recently is getting link speed a bit earlier than usual, but it doesn't change too much of the game. Still in the mid game, you want to go uh, link Hydra into Muta transition because. Stargate openers are really, really common right now, and Ling Hydra can either prevent a third or do quite a bit of damage. And then behind that, you take a fourth, you get up your Spire, you make a lot of mutas, and you just keep them on the defensive the whole game. Now, you say Ling Hydra. If you're going to be relying on Ling Hydra to, to deny a third base, do you feel like a Protoss can take advantage of that by expanding a little bit faster? Um, I don't know if a faster expansion would help too much. I know that there are some timings that, like, if you're opening Ling Hydra, you have to be careful of gateway timings because your uh, your Hydras won't be up in time. But I don't. I'm not sure if a faster expansion would really help that much, just because you're going to have the same amount of units and they they might not have their production kicked in yet, because your timing hits not early but relatively uh, relatively early. Cool. I was just uh, making a frowny face in our chat room because Andre is teasing me for my portrait. Um, <laughs> all right, so uh, let's go ahead and get our first map hosted up. If you could pick any map to play against Protoss on, what would that map be? Uh, just Daybreak or something. I don't know. Right. Daybreak's fine. Go with the classic, the, the map that we have not seen enough <laughs> ZVP on already. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, oops, I oh, did Oh, Aklan Waste. That's fine, too. <coughs> nope, 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 nope. I will host Daybreak. Create game instead of join game. And I'll get you guys invited into the lobby, and then we're going to just jump right in. Now, the way this is going to work, Kane, if you've watched any of my other shows in the past, you might be familiar with it. You're going to play. I'm going to ask you questions. You're going to talk us through it. And then we're going to switch positions. I'll be the one playing. You'll be kind of guiding me through your build. And that's how it's all going to go down. Okay, sounds good. Hopefully I'll be able to concentrate and talk to you at the same time. But it shouldn't be too much of an issue. Well, I, I promise you that if... Um, 
if uh, if if Andre beats you, he'll never let you hear the end of it. I know. That's <laughs> what I'm worried about. <laughs>